All right, this is 2015 question one, and uh, this is one of those good examples of a question that could be answered either with algebra or with calculus. I've said before that the calculus part of this test isn't that big, probably accounts for less than 25%, but there are a lot of questions that could be answered with calculus, such as this one. All right, so in the, the first part, uh, of this asks for the acceleration of the block. Well, that's easy. This is an inclined plane, so we have a block, and we know that there's, you know, gravitational force and the normal force, yada, 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 and we know that we could break up this gravitational force into a parallel and a perpendicular. Remember, these two are components of FG. If you were ever to actually draw the FBD, you would never put in F parallel or F perpendicular. All right. uh, because Fn crosses out with F perpendicular, that means the only force acting on this block, since it is frictionless, um, is the F parallel force. So F net equals F parallel equals MA. F parallel, if you remember, it was Mg sine theta equals ma cross this out and we get that the acceleration is equal to g sine theta now the thing that we have to make sure is after we get this answer this is only half of the answer the next thing is whether or not this is a plus or a minus sign so is it positive or negative well if we look at this diagram over here we see that right here is x equals zero and right over here is x equals d. So that means that going down the incline is represented as positive. So since the gravitational forces, uh, the parallel forces down the incline and down is positive, that means that this is a positive g sine theta. Now the good thing is that this was worth only one point. One point for the answer, which means and I've said this before, but if you didn't know how to get A, you could have made up an answer for A, lost that one point, but then used it in all your other parts to get the correct answer. Don't forget that. It's the easiest way to save points. If you don't know how to do a part of one of the problems, make up an answer and move on to the next part and use your answer that you got. Alright, now part two is where they want the velocity of the block. Again, we could either use algebra or calculus. I'm going to start off with the algebra part. So we already know that the acceleration is a positive g sine theta. Well, they want an expression for the velocity of the block. So, if I look at this equation, v equals v0 plus at, look at that. I can start plugging in numbers. Now, I already know what A is. A is G sine theta times T. Alright, do we have an initial velocity? Yes, we have an initial velocity right here. But, again, we have to look at the direction, and we see that it's going up the ramp. So, if you recall that down the ramp was positive, that means that this must be a negative V0. So the answer, I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit differently, is given as this. Now this question was worth two points. Basically, one point for using this into that equation, and then um, one point for the negative sign on V0. Now, I said before that you could have used calculus, and the way you would have done it would be through this. Recall that the acceleration of an object is equal to dv dt. dv equals a dt. Remember, that's what we get. Integrate both sides. This goes from 0 to t, and this goes from v0 to v. Alright, the integral of dv 
with nothing in front of it is just V. And A is a constant term, so that's just equal to AT from 0 to T. And you end up getting V minus V0 equals AT. And then plug the numbers in. V equals negative V0 plus AT, yada, yada, yada. Actually, technically, this should be a negative V0 because of the direction. So that would actually make this positive. All right, but again, you could have used integration and calculus to get this, or you could have used the, um, the algebra way. Either way will give you the right answer. All right, now, again, next part, it's looking for position, and I can once again use algebra or calculus. I'm going to stick with algebra. So it wants position. We already know what the velocity is. We already know what the acceleration is. So let's use the annoying x equation. I think for the most part, you probably could have gotten the answer with any of the uh, equations, but let's go start with this one first. E plus one half at squared. So this, well, we know what the initial x position, that's d. So this should be just be a d. Plus, we know what the initial v0 is, it's negative v0. t plus 1 half, and we already know that's g sine theta. So putting it all together would be d minus v0t plus one half g sine theta t squared. Um, and this one was really only one point. One point for basically putting in the right, all the terms, this term, and this term, and this term, into this equation. Now, I just actually tried it out, and you will get the exact same answer if you use the um, timeless equation, the v squared equals v0 squared plus 2ax minus x0. You will get the exact same answer, though a little bit more roundabout way and a little bit trickier. Alright, um, again, we can use calculus. I'll just go quickly about it. Um, this time, if we're looking for position, we know that... Um, oh, that position is just the integral of velocity with respect to time. Well, we already know what the velocity equation was. It was g sine theta t minus v0. And again, all with respect to dt, going from 0 to t. And we should probably actually, should have put that there. And this is going from d to x. Integral dx d to x. Okay, integrate this, you get x minus d equals, well, this uh, negative v0 is easy, it's just going to be negative v0t. But this is a little bit trickier because now we actually have a t there. So the g sine theta remains where it is. But the integral of t is would be one half t squared. I recommend if you don't know how to integrate this, that you double check that one slide that I have where I go over integrations. Otherwise, ask me and I'll make another video. All right. Now they want us to find the expression for the uh, posi uh, the minimum position of the block when it's close to the motion sensor. Now, there's a few ways to go about doing this. Um, you could use energy. That might be very, um, very straightforward. You know, you have kinetic energy here, and the 
highest point that it reaches, that's what they're looking for, it's the maximum height, is where it has all potential. Only thing is that you're going to end up getting this height, and then you're going to have to use that to figure out what this length is. Um, another way is to use the timeless equation. So v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a x minus x0. Now the good thing that the thing that you should know is that this, the closest to the motion sensor, the max height, like in most cases, is where v equals zero. So that's the point where the velocity, the final velocity is zero. So zero equals v zero squared. I'm dropping the negative because you know negative squared is just a positive plus two g sine theta x minus d. Now I'm going to give this a little m. All right, negative v zero. 2g sine theta minus d negative v0 square g sine theta and you'll end up coming up with this answer d minus v0 squared over 2g sine theta. Alright, this was worth two points. Basically, one point for realizing that the final velocity the final velocity is zero, and one point for using this equation and plugging it in properly. So using that equation and plugging it in properly to here. Alright, now they want us to graph the uh, position, the velocity, and the acceleration. Now, um, though I had men, uh, mentioned this, the curve linear constant zero graph, the fact that you know you can use, uh, you can figure out what the other graphs are going to look like uh, based off of this. This really only works with a constant acceleration. Um, but with the APC, you don't always have a constant acceleration. So this, this is more as a, you could use that as a reference rather than a rule. All right, but uh, like always, I want to start with acceleration. All right. Well, in this case, acceleration is constant. It's constant as it goes up and as it comes down, and it's also a constant positive number. So the graph would just look like a straight line here, and I could even write g sine theta. Boom. There we go. I got one of my answers. All right, now on to v. Well, according to this, if my acceleration is constant, then my velocity should be linear. So, where I'm going to have a linear line starting from negative v0 straight up. Boom. That's my second graph. And then my position. Well, again, if my position, if my acceleration is constant, my velocity is linear, then my position must be curved. So, I'm going to have a parabola. I'm going to have a parabola that starts off at d and then alright actually this one's gonna be a little bit trickier so it starts off at D and then it goes down it gets closer to the origin but it never actually gets to the origin it just gets really close and then it comes back down so this one in fact I'm actually gonna reposition where I put my oh, alright looks like I can't erase Uh, I can't erase. All right, so I'm going to put D over here instead, and I'm going to replace this with X minimum. So this graph is actually going to start here and do just a normal problem. 
pardon the sloppiness, but this is supposed to be a normal parabola. So it's going to go down as this goes close to the sensor, never reaching zero, and then going back up as it falls back down. All right, and this was worth four points. So you had um, one point for realizing that this was a parabola that never crosses the x-axis. You had one point for realizing that the velocity was linear that crosses the x-axis, basically going from negative over to the positive. You got one point for realizing that the acceleration was constant. And then you get one point just for having three graphs that were all consistent. So again, if you decide to make your distance graph linear, then if you made your velocity graph constant and your acceleration zero, then you would have gotten at least one point. So don't forget that. Sometimes consistency will still get you something, some points, even if you aren't really sure what you're doing. All right, now they're changing it up. Now they're saying that there's going to be friction. It's going to have friction when it comes back down, and they want us to know how, well, they want to find out how far will it land. All right, well, let's see. We know that the initial velocity is going to be v0. And the acceleration, well, let's see. F net equals ma. When it's on the frictional plane, friction, it's only got the force due to friction going one direction. It's got the normal force, got weight. So the only force that's actually acting on it to accelerate it is friction, which is mu Fn, which is equal to Ma. And it's mu Mg equals Ma. So acceleration is just mu G, mu Kg to be exact. And let's see. Now from here again we could go one of two ways. We could go the kinematics route and just say again use the um, timeless equation v0 squared plus 2ad since that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this distance um, and I have everything else. I know it's going to end up stopping, coming to rest. It's going to have an initial velocity of v0. I know it has an acceleration of mu kg. So moving things around, and I end up getting um, v0 squared over 2 mu g. Uh, if you're wondering where that negative went, well, technically, my acceleration is supposed to be negative. So that should be negative mu kg. Alright. And that's what you end up getting. Um, and this was worth two points. One point for the correct answer. And one point for figuring out how to use friction to get the acceleration. Now, that was the kinematics route. I could have also went the energy route and said that the kinetic energy it has ends up being lost due to work done by friction, which is FD. So it ends up going uh, so it ends up losing one half MV zero squared. I already found out that the frictional force is just uh mu k mgd plugging it all in masses drop out and I end up coming up with v0 squared over 2 mu k g look at that it's almost like this stuff makes sense so again you could have went either route to each his own whichever route you wanted you could do that now, this one's a little bit trickier. All right, so now they said that it's uh, the same block is going up the ramp, but now the ramp has friction. So 
let's think about it. When it's going up the ramp, the block has forces going, two forces going down. It has F parallel and F due to friction. So that means that this acceleration is going to be a lot bigger. I'm actually going to call this new. Let me actually erase that. Let me call this a up. Much bigger than the original acceleration. Now when it's going down, well it still has the parallel force going down, but now when it's going down it also has the frictional force going up. So that means that this, when it's going down, is actually going to have a smaller acceleration. I drew that arrow the wrong way. Eight down. It's going to actually have a smaller acceleration than that, which means that the acceleration going up is going to be bigger than the acceleration going down. Now, because of this, this object is no longer going to be uniform. See, before, it would, uh, because of the fact that uh, whether it was going up or down the ramp, it was experiencing the exact same acceleration. That means the time it takes for it to go up had to equal the time it took for it to go down. Now, because the accelerations are different, that's not going to be the case. So, what we're going to have is two different scenarios. The first is it's when it accelerates up, it's going to have a really strong, sharp line going up. And then the next part, it's going to have a weaker slope. So we're going to have a sharp slope and a weaker slope. So you end up getting three points for this one. Uh, you get one point for realizing that there's a difference. So realizing that there's a change right along this line, that's one point. You get one point for realizing that A up and is greater than A down, which means that this slope is going to be bigger than this slope. Slope 1 is bigger than slope 2. And then you get one point for realizing this, that it's going to reach its maximum height before uh, half TF. Again, because it's not symmetric, because it's not a constant acceleration down, it's different whether it goes up or down, it's going to end up reaching its maximum height quicker than it takes for it to slow down, to go down the ramp. All right, again, practice this question. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know as soon as possible.